Assalamu alaikum, I am Dr. Parvin Akhtar, Professor and Head, Department of Physiology, Boshindhara Adi Medical College, Dhaka. Today I am going to deliver my lecture on oxygen transport from lungs to tissue. First, the partial pressure of gas. What is the partial pressure of gas? It is a pressure exerted by individual gas in a mixture of gases. It is directly proportional to the concentration of gas molecule and solubility in blood. This is form of gas exert the partial pressure. We know the atmospheric air contains nitrogen 79% and oxygen 21%. At sea level, the total atmospheric pressure is 760 mm of mercury. So the partial pressure of nitrogen is 600 mm of mercury and partial pressure of oxygen is 160 mm of mercury. Net diffusion of gas, net diffusion will occur from higher concentration of area toward the, toward the lower concentration of area. Now the partial pressure of oxygen at different level. Alveolar air it is 104 mm of mercury, pulmonary arterial end it is 40 mm of mercury, pulmonary venous end 104 mm of mercury, tissue arterial end 95 mm of mercury, tissue venous end 40 mm of mercury, interstitial space 40 mm of mercury and in the cell it is 23 mm of mercury. Now I elaborately discuss the transport of oxygen from the lungs to the body tissue. At first, the diffusion of oxygen from the alveoli to the pulmonary capillary blood. Partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus is 104 mm of mercury and partial pressure of <coughs> oxygen in the pulmonary capillaries at the arterial end is 40 mm of mercury. So pressure difference is 64 mm of mercury which causes the oxygen to diffuse into the pulmonary capillary blood. Transport of oxygen in the blood. Number two, the transport of oxygen in the blood. Partial pressure of oxygen in the <coughs> venous end is 104 mm of mercury. Here, the 98% of <coughs> blood is oxygenated, and partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial end is 40 mm of mercury. Here, here the 20%, 2% blood is deoxygenated blood. Due to venous admixture, there is <coughs> partial pressure of oxygen is reduced in the tissue capillary which is 95 mm of mercury and transport of oxygen in the blood. 97% of oxygen is transported in combination with hemoglobin in the form of oxyhemoglobin by the process of oxygenation and 3% is dissolved state and dissolved state exert the partial <coughs> pressure and which is the oxygenation and oxidation. In oxygenation, iron remain in the ferrous form and it is reversible and here oxygen binds with the iron is loosely. And in oxidation, iron remain in ferric form and it is irreversible reaction and oxygen here binds with iron is firmly. And number three is diffusion of oxygen from the blood into the interstitial fluid. Arterial blood partial pressure of oxygen in peripheral tissue is 95 mm of mercury and partial pressure of oxygen in the interstitial fluid is 40 mm of mercury and pressure difference is 55 mm of mercury which causes oxygen to diffuse rapidly from the capillary blood into the interstitial space. Number 4. The diffusion of oxygen from the interstitial fluid into the tissue cell. Partial pressure of oxygen in the interstitial fluid is 40 mm of mercury. And intercellular partial pressure of oxygen ranges from as low as 5 mm of mercury to as high as 40 mm of mercury. Averaging is 23 mm of mercury. Intercellular partial pressure of oxygen 23 mm of mercury is more than adequate and provides a large safety factor. So pressure difference is 70 mm of mercury which causes oxygen to diffuse into the cell. Now the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. Oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve is a graphical representation showing the relationship between the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with the partial pressure of oxygen. In systemic arterial blood, the partial pressure of oxygen about 95 mm of mercury 
here oxygen saturation about 97 percent and in normal venous blood partial pressure of oxygen is 40 millimeter of mercury and here hemoglobin saturation is about 75 percent and when the partial pressure of oxygen is 25 to 27 millimeter of mercury here hemoglobin is 50 percent saturated We know the hemoglobin concentration in normal arterial blood is 15 gram per de deciliter and 1 gram of hemoglobin can bind with 1.34 milligram of he hemoglobin. So on an average 15 gram of hemoglobin can bind with 20 ml of oxygen when the hemoglobin is 100 percent saturated. So it usually expresses 20 volume percentage. And oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve has flat part or association part and strip part or dissociation part and it is sigma shape. Why it is sigma shape? It is we know the hemoglobin molecule has four binding sites. When the first site is bound with the molecule of oxygen, the binding of the second site is facilitated. When the second site is facilitated, it facilitates the third site and it is so on. So the affinity to binding with oxygen increases progressively as much as oxygen is added on. And what is the P50? It is a partial pressure of oxygen at which the hemoglobin is half saturated that is 50 percent with the oxygen. The normal partial pressure of oxygen, the normal P50 for arterial blood is 25 to 27 nanometer of millimeter of mercury. The higher the P50, the lower the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Factor affecting P50, it is the increased partial pressure of carbon dioxide increase 250 by bisphosphoglycerate, exercise, thyroid hormone, growth hormone, androgen and high altitude. Now the parts of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve, it has two part, flat part or association part and steep part or dissociation part. And flat part is the plateau portion occurs between the partial pressure of oxygen between the 60 to 100 millimeter of mercury and it occurs in the lungs. And importance of the flat part is the saturation and oxygen content remain fairly constant despite what fluctuation in the alveolar partial pressure of oxygen. That is, if the partial pressure of oxygen occurs between the 18 millimeter of 80 millimeter of mercury, percentage of hemoglobin is 94 percent. And if the partial pressure of oxygen is 100 millimeter of mercury, percentage saturation of hemoglobin is 97 percent. And steep part or dissociation part, it is the unloading zone. This portion of the curve occurs at partial pressure of oxygen tension below the 60 millimeter of mercury and it occurs in the tissue and importance of the part is allow large quantities of oxygen to be released in the, in the tissue in response to relatively small change in partial pressure of oxygen. So the factors of that shift the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve. The shift of the oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve to the right indicates that decrease the oxygen affinity of hemoglobin for ox <coughs> ox affinity of the hemoglobin for oxygen that is oxygen is released into the tissue and shifting of the curve to the left indicates that increase the affinity of the hemoglobin for oxygen that is it occurs in the lungs. And what is the factor that shift the curve to the right? It is the increased partial pressure of carbon dioxide, increased hydrogen ion or decreased pH, increased concentration of 2,3 dpg and increase the temperature. So what is the 2,3 d, what is the factor that affect the cap to the lab and it is an important factor of 2,3 dpg. It is a very plentiful in red blood cell formed from 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde, a product of glycolysis by the amyloid marrow pathway. So if the concentration of 2,3 dpg increase in blood, it hemoglobin binds with the 2,3 dpg that shift the curve to the right and causing more oxygen to be released into the tissue. Another factor that shift the curve to the right is increased temperature. So increase the temperature, decrease pH or increase carbon dioxide, decrease affinity for hemoglobin, shift the curve to the right, more oxygen is released into the tissue. Factor shifting to the left, curve to the left is, is the decrease partial pressure of carbon dioxide, decrease hydrogen ion or increase pH, decrease concentration of 2,3 dpg, decrease temperature and fetal hemoglobin.
fetal hemoglobin, the greater affinity of fetal hemoglobin than adult hemoglobin for oxygen facilitates the movement of oxygen for the mother to from the mother to fetus. This causes of greater affinity is due to poor binding of 2 3 dpg by the gamma polypeptide chain that replaces the beta chain in the fetal hemoglobin. Now the Bohr effect. Bohr effect is a shift of oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve in response to change in blood partial pressure of carbon dioxide and in hydrogen ion that increase the delivery of oxygen to the tissue and increase oxygenation of the blood in the lungs is called the Bohr effect. In the tissue, the effect are when the blood passes through the tissue, carbon dioxide diffuses from the tissue to <coughs> tissue cells in the blood. So, increase the blood partial pressure of carbon dioxide, increase carbonic acid and hydrogen ion. So, carb is shift to the right. So, it decreases the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So, oxygen is released into the tissue. So, if it is occurs in the lungs, the opposite occur effect occurs in the lungs. Carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveoli, reduces the blood partial pressure of carbon dioxide and decreases the hydrogen ion, then shift the curve to the left. So, increase the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So, the quantity of oxygen binds to the hemoglobin increases, increases. So, allowing the greater oxygen transport to the tissue. So, this is all about my lecture. So, Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.